1924, Albert Osman, a Canadian gold prospector, decided that he was going to scout a new area near the Toba Inlet in British Columbia to see if it had any gold yield. Osman was accompanied to the area by a Native American guide. However, when they reached a certain point, the guide refused to go any further, and he warned Osman to do the same because the area was the domain of man-beasts. Osman thought this was mere superstition and trekked on alone. Problems soon arose as Osman set up his tent for the night. He would awaken each morning to find that an animal had silently been through his belongings in the night. At first, Osman thought it was a bear, but he was confused as to why there were no claw or tooth marks on his belongings. On the fourth night, as Osman slept in his sleeping bag, he claims he felt a huge hand grab him, heave him over a massive shoulder, and began carrying him through the forest. After what felt like an eternity, Osman was finally put down, and he was horrified to see he was on a plateau, miles away from his campsite, and surrounded by four huge hair-covered creatures. The beasts did not attack Osman, but they also did not let him leave their sight. He was forced to live with the family of creatures, which he described as a mother, a father, and two children for an entire week. Though he had his gun, he feared they were so massive that shooting one would only make the others angry. One day, the huge male grabbed his snuff box and ate the whole contents, then ran off in search of water. While the family was panicked, Osman claimed he made a run for it, grabbing only his gun, and ran for his life through the woods until he got to a river where he was picked up by rafters. Osman kept his story a secret for 24 years until in 1957 he finally came forward and told a national newspaper. Jeannie Chapman was startled one afternoon in September 1941 when her young son came home terrified, claiming to have seen a cow coming out of the woods next to the house. Perplexed as to why a cow would have had her child so scared, Jeannie walked onto her porch where she saw a very large, dark shape moving through the underbrush. Thinking it was a bear, Jeannie called her other two children inside, but after realizing it had been spotted, the creature raised up to its full height and stared straight at the shocked family. Jeannie realized that this was no bear. Instead, she described it as a giant man covered in dark brown hair. The huge beast began to head straight for Jeannie and the kids. Jeannie quickly took her children and fled to the nearby town where she took refuge with friends. There she exclaimed that her husband George would soon arrive home from work and the creature may be waiting for him. Luckily, by the time George did get home, the Bigfoot was long gone, but his home had been ransacked, his front door caved inwards, and a 55-gallon barrel of dried fish had been smashed open and its contents were eaten. After reuniting with his family, George gathered a group of men with guns and dogs to wait in his house the next night to see if the creature would return. And while at one point in the night the dogs went berserk, nobody ever spotted the creature, only its huge footprints in the dirt the next morning. The Chapmans, no longer feeling safe in their own home, moved away from Ruby Creek the following summer. But this is not where the story ends. Some Native American traditions state that to see a Bigfoot is a bad omen, and those who encounter one will die soon. The Chapman's youngest daughter died of an illness just the following year, and their two sons, as well as Jeannie and George, were all drowned when their canoe capsized. Every member of the Chapman family was dead just three years after their Bigfoot encounter. <laughs>